This is the new Maruti Bileno. It's a car which is squarely aimed at Hyundai's strong selling Elite i20. So is the Bileno just a bigger version of the Swift or does it really have what it takes to beat the king in its own segment? We'll find out on the show today. Well, the Bileno, just like the Swift as well as the S-Cross, will come with an all-black cabin. There's no beige in the cabin and that's a good thing because uh, the beige inside these cars does tend to uh, soil rather easily. Well, you had it, of course, inside the cabin is uh, the Apple CarPlay system, which you can access through this huge 7-inch uh, uh, screen over here. And this screen also doubles up as the navigation device as well as the uh, car stereo. Well, overall, in terms of quality, this car is at par with most of its rivals. It is at par with the Hyundai Elite i20, which, of course, is its main rival. It's also a pretty practical place to be in. You get two cup holders over here. You get a small tray where you can keep your phone as well as wallet right up ahead. You also get this small box over here where you can, of course, uh, keep those Tic Tacs or those small chewing gums in. Even though both these cars are very similar in terms of the features list, it is the Elite i20 which has the advantage over the Beleno in terms of overall cabin ambience. This car has much better plastics and the design of the dashboard is also much better than the one on the Beleno. In terms of practicality, both these cars are very similar. You get uh, two cup holders over here right next to the handbrake. You also get a big tray right ahead of the Galio where you can keep your cell phone and wallet. And the door bins are large enough even on the Elite i20 to house those big bottles from your home. Well, so who wins the battle of the front seat? Undoubtedly, it is the Hyundai Elite i20, which has the edge with its very stylish and premium dashboard. This car feels like a posh place to be in and has that essential feel-good factor about its cabin. Well, here I am in the back seat of the all-new Maruti Suzuki Baleno, and I have just the front seat for my height and my drying position, and my height for reference is 5'10", and even then, I have got loads of knee room over here, Headroom is pretty generous as well, so this is one of the better small cars for those tall passengers. In terms of seat comfort, the seats are definitely better than the one on its main rival, the Hyundai Elite i20. And that's largely because these seats aren't as uh, soft as uh, the ones on the i20, and they offer you very good cushioning. Overall support for your under thighs is very good, the backrest angle is excellent, and uh, this makes it a better car for those longer highway trips. Well, in isolation, uh, the Elite i20's rear seats are pretty good for uh, knee room as well as headroom. And also, it is a pretty large car at the back. It's a wide car at the back, which means that uh, sitting three over here in comfort should not be an issue. But when you compare it with the Beleno, that car has a lot more knee room, which means that uh, that car offers you a much more spacious rear seat experience. Also, the i20's uh, raising waistline on the outside means that uh, passengers will feel a little claustrophobic on those long journeys. So, the battle of the rear seat clearly goes to the Beleno. Well, with 285 litres of uh, boot space, the i20 is pretty good when it comes to its class and category. But it is, uh, again, trumped by the Beleno in this department. The Beleno with 339 litres has the clear advantage in this department. But that tall loading lip and that high sill means that loading in those heavy baggages will take a lot of toll on your back. But that said, the extra 50 litres of space does give the Beleno the clear edge over the i20 in the boot department as well. Well, the diesel engine is, of course, the tried and tested motor, and we have really seen this on a lot of cars in the Maruti Suzuki platform. And uh, it does suffer from a little bit of turbo lag, so you will have to uh, pump it up to 2000 RPM before it really gets going. But of course, once it does cross that mark, it really does fly. And uh, the engine is uh, very good in terms of power delivery and responsiveness once, of course, it crosses that figure. The gearbox is also very crisp and is uh, very similar in operation to the one on the Maruti Suzuki Swift. In fact, this car really does feel like you are driving a slightly larger version of the Maruti Suzuki Swift. So just like the Swift, this uh, Beleno is also a fun car to drive and that's largely because the chassis is pretty dynamic and also feels very stable at higher speeds and the steering wheel is also very responsive and offers you a good amount of feedback from the tyres up ahead. And this car is a nice mix of uh, comfortable ride as well as agile handling and it does soak in the bumps at slow city speeds very well and even on the highway it does feel very reassuring and very stable. Well, so here I am driving the Hyundai Elite i20 and this car has a bigger engine than the one on the Beleno. This car offers you a 1.4 litre diesel which develops about 89 bhp of power. And in that sense, it has the advantage over the Beleno in the outright power department. Another area where this car has uh, the advantage over the Beleno is the fact that uh, this is a six-speed gearbox on this car, not a five-speed one like the Beleno offers you. And what that essentially means is that when you are driving the i20 on the highway, 
this car has greater flexibility and the engine remains a lot more refined than the one on the Boleno and uh, this car feels a lot more quieter inside the cabin when you are pushing the rev limiter on this car. But in terms of overall responsiveness, uh, both these cars are more or less the same and both these cars suffer from a lot of turbo lag below 1700-1800 RPM. But that said, once you do get used to it, both these cars are pleasurable nonetheless. But once you cross that 2000 RPM mark, the power is delivered in spades and goes all the way up to its red line of about 5000 RPM. Well, if you are someone who drives a lot in the city and is constantly stuck in Choco Block City traffic, then you will really enjoy driving the Hyundai Elite i20. And that's largely because it offers you a supremely light steering wheel, which means that maneuvering around those tight city bends is a breeze. And also, finding a tight parking spot is not a big issue in this car because the steering wheel is very, very light. Well, if you are someone who drives a lot on the highway, then you will prefer the ride quality on the Baleno over the one on the Elite i20. Well, not only does the Baleno feel a lot more stable on the highway, it also seems to absorb those uh, bumps as well as potholes and bad surfaces on the highway than uh, the suspension on the Elite i20 does. The i20's gearbox is a lot more lighter and easier to operate than the one on the Baleno. But that said, it's neck and neck in terms of shift pattern from both these boxes. Well, even though the Baleno is a charming product and has its own strengths, like a roomy cabin, a long list of features and the trusted Maruti name, it is the Hyundai Elite i20 which has the advantage in the diesel versions of these cars at least. Well, how is that? Well, because this car offers you the greater flexibility of a sixth gear, more refinement and a much more powerful engine as well. All that along with the fact that this car offers you the more posh and upmarket cabin means that if you are spending this amount of money on a diesel version of these two cars, then you'll be better spending it on the Hyundai Elite i20.